always had a convention of presenting a earlier adventure which links the rest of the story. Nothing like this had ever been done since the old days of the Republic serial. You want to get dropped back into Indiana Jones and have that feeling that you had when you first saw Raiders of the Lost Ark or Temple of Doom. You sat down, there was Indiana Jones, and you knew you were immediately going to head off into a new adventure. In this case, doing a sequence, and a really elaborate one, with Indiana at his prime, fighting Nazis. I felt like I wanted the chance to make a movie with a young Harrison. The ambition in me wanted to crack at it. So we wrote a sequence, a kind of elaborate adventure that opens the film. We're doing this, 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 then we're doing this, 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 okay? <laughs> An essential element of an Indiana Jones film is that we see the world. It's inspiring us about how much there is to find under our own roof on this planet. The opening image, you know, we're coming out of the Lucas logos. Steady inside the van. Okay. Actually, in a very traditional way, like with, with the dolly track, no fancy equipment. It all goes from a micro shot to huge scale. Then there's the question, well, how are you going to shoot Harrison in 1944 when he would be 37 years old? The methodology used footage of me from 40 years ago that was in the vaults of Lucasfilm. It's very, very effective. We've got two really important things in our favor. One, the best bunch of people with the right kind of technology. And two, Harrison Ford is really good at playing Indiana Jones. This way, come on! I recognize that my voice has changed as, as I've aged, and I can force it into a higher register, and I can add a little extra energy to it. He could see that it was getting what he was doing, meaning it was coming from his soul. He was driving the expressions, the intensity, the passion of the character. Smashing through stuff, falling through floors, breaking here, breaking there. He wanted to try and make this feel like something that is of its time. And of its time means the 1980s and those original movies. There are certain sounds that Indiana Jones must have, and that is the over-the-top punches, the big guns, the very big, iconic sounds. We wanted to really enjoy and celebrate the Indiana Jones legacy. We had a lot of discussion about the Wilhelm scream. We had a little vote of where it would go, and we put it in six or seven places, and the one that you hear now is the winner. I think people will recognize the style of the earlier films. Faden and I would go after the kind of Dougie Slocum feel, which is also inseparable from Steven's own sense of staging. So scenes with shadows or scenes where an actor comes big into lens up to minimum focus. Using a lot of those classic devices in terms of lighting sources. We have a lot of, you know, Dougie Slocum references. In making a movie like this, it's kind of like you're making a visual score. All these little pieces that all have to make a whole. Is this a process shot? Is this a stuntman shot? Is this Harrison doing for real? You have to plan out all these locations. Each one of these choices you're making for each shot. But the summation of all these choices is what we love about movies.